Hello and welcome to Kerbal Swiss Round. This design that you're looking at now was completely stolen from someone who made this as their first accidental SSTO, except they added some, uh, they had some oxidi- oh, it is full of oxidizer. They had oxidizer in there and they put some little engines on the outside and it turns out that this can make a very small, very sharp looking SSTO. And I'm just loading this in here right quick to show you it because it looks kind of cool. It works all right, but it's eh, eh, eh. The real reason I'm here today is the Viper. So remember I had the Viper concept uh, 3 or 3.1, I'm not sure. Anyhow, after I was working on it a little bit and I made a video about it, I added our... I was about to call these RCS. These are not RCS. These are radioisotope thermoelectric generators. Yes, that is what they are called. And a fuel cell back here so that you can generate power. Uh, I think some other things have been slightly tweaked or modified, but I'm not 100% sure. I know that I made small various changes all throughout the design process of this craft, but basically, at this point, I'm considering the Viper Concept 3.2 complete. Uh, it may have been the 3.2 that I was making the video of. I believe during that video I made some modifications, but in any case, the Viper Concept 3.2 is complete, and uh, there will be a download in the description. I might not have had the parachutes on the one that I showed, or maybe I did. I'm not sure. So I'm just bringing this out here onto the field to take off really fast and show you, whoops, and show you that it flies, it flies, it flies very maneuverably. Ooh, that is pretty. I, I keep forgetting that they have those like launch effects and then I see them and I'm like, oh yes, launch effects. And it's great. And uh, let's see, what was I going to say about it? I was going to just say that, look, it's it's pretty cool, it's maneuverable. I mean, you have to, uh, you have to pull up for a bit because if you're going too fast, then it's not as maneuverable because, you know, the faster you're going, the harder it is to change your orientation when you have aerodynamic forces interacting with you. One thing that can help with that is if you have the RCS on because the RCS is using vernier thrusters. You can do cool things like this, just give it a moment, where I can just basically turn around midair and go back the way I was. Of course, I'm at full throttle, that's why I'm able to do such crazy maneuvers. If I wasn't at full throttle, I wouldn't be able to uh, generate enough power to do that. This thing also can quite easily stop itself from falling with just the engines and go back up because it has a uh, sufficiently high thrust to weight ratio. I don't know what the thrust to weight ratio is. Also, I want to say be careful if you're going at low altitude at full throttle. Um, I'm not sure about in 1.0.2, but I know in 1.0 that if you went at low altitude at full throttle horizontally, uh, you would burn up. You would get so fast that this thing would burn up, and uh, that's not necessarily the best thing for your day. It is also possible to take off with this craft from the ground with just its uh, just its one landing gear, because this thing is kind of silly in that... Oops, yep, let me open it. It has one single big landing gear, and that was just because I couldn't get like the regular Viper landing gear to work, but I could get this to work, and it looks silly, and I didn't want to have like standard landing gear like it was like it was viper or it's got to be like weird like i don't know i don't know i don't know why i did it really um maybe just cuz this actually looked pretty cool the way it looked closed and um the way you would actually land it is uh using the brakes which by the way look at that we have air brakes that split open there i believe we're falling pretty much down yeah we're falling pretty much down which is convenient because well there's a drogue chute that could help us slow down of course that'll pitch us forward but we have a bigger parachute to make sure that we fall straight and the bigger parachute as you might have noticed is actually centered and then we just bounce and that time I unfortunately I wasn't thinking about it I should have held down um, S a little bit because if you bounce too hard forward you will break the nose off which then reduces its performance at higher altitudes unfortunately as well as you know doesn't look right anymore but that's still not the point of today's video because today's video is about the Viper Concept 4.3 which as you might have noticed right away has landing gear in the proper orientation for a Viper it also has a ton of little vertical thrusters on it so that it can actually just barely take off from the ground from sitting absolutely still otherwise it's basically the same features oh yes it does have you might have noticed this there is a lot more fuel here we have several pieces here that add more fuel they also change the look up here slightly because they stick through they clip through a bit but I think they look nice. You might have noticed this version has that. Remember, if you remember, I fixed that in the other one, but uh, that was before I made this version and I didn't want to risk modifying it in case I accidentally break something. In any case, here it is. Oh yes, we have the fuel cell on the back. We have the uh, radioisotope thermoelectric generator sticking in the back there. 
And um, let's go ahead and wait, let me check the action groups because I don't remember. Okay, main engine mode. No, wait, okay. Oh, switch main engine mode. Okay, yeah, that's to go between rocket and jet mode. And then we have three and four for the landing thrusters and main engines. Three and four. However, it's not quite that simple, as you might have noticed by the way that we loaded up. These rear landing gear cannot hold up the weight. That is because they have their shock absorbers activated. And the problem is, I tried to make them without shock absorbers, like the front landing gear here, because that would have held up and worked properly. I mean, it would have been rigid, and that's not as good, but it would have held up properly. The problem is, no matter what I did, the, uh, the landing gear would just glitch through the ground when it loaded, which really sucked. So I ended up making these ones have suspension, and then I added these little, uh, whatchamacallits, these little I-beams on the ends of the wings to kind of protect them from hitting the ground. And so that's why they're there, if you, if you noticed them and were wondering. That's why they're there. There's also a light here because the other version had a landing gear that had a light, if I remember correctly. Or did it have a light here too? I don't remember. You can rewind and find out for yourself. <laughs> In any case, the way to take off with this plane isn't as simple as it might seem. It's not just hit space and you fly up. It's, let's activate the SAS to help us control things. We're going to activate RCS. And we have to hit space and hold down K to give vertical thrust from the RCS system. Because without the RCS system, it can't take off. But with the RCS system, it can take off. It's... wow. Did they rebalance the parts in 1.0.2 again? Because this should have taken off a bit easier than that. Well, in any case, let's activate the engines. And we're going up, and we can deactivate that, and we'll deactivate the... whoops. I think they definitely changed some things, because that used to take off and only use about a third of its fuel to take off, not all of it. Yeah, unfortunately, the Viper design does not work so well with gravity. When you have a spaceship in space, you don't need that much vertical thrust to actually take off from whatever you're uh, quote-unquote landed on, so it works quite well, but otherwise, uh, not so much. And I think I just noticed both a player.me notification noise, which, whoops, and and this this engine light mod has totally screwed up right here and it is insisting that an engine is on and creating a bunch of light right there when there's there's nothing there oh hey i have rcs and the and the sas on so it's trying to it's trying to thrust to turn me slightly <laughs> let's just turn that off there we go yeah oh, that looks cool even when it's all broken that looks cool doesn't it yes all right, we're going to give it one more try. I've accidentally used a tiny bit of the fuel, but that's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to hit R, we're going to hit K, we're going to hit space, we're going to hit space again, we're going to hit G, and then we're going to go about this angle and hit 3. And that's a tricky takeoff, especially because this thing does not have the same thrust to weight ratio as the other one. But as you can see, we can manage to take off. We can also, if we turn the RCS on, we can still be the same kind of stupid high maneuverability where I can go, you know, that way and then just decide, you know what, I'm actually going to go that way and it will work. Of course, again, this thing is much heavier because it has a whole bunch of extra fuel down here, so the thrust to weight ratio is not as good. Also, another reason the thrust to weight ratio is not as good is because this upper engine has to be thrust limited very low in order to balance the center of lift and center of mass properly because unlike the other one, well actually the other one has the same problem, but the other one has the upper engine operating at like 40 or 50 percent, whereas this one has it operating at 20 percent, so it's even less which means overall it's it's not a practical design but I like it because it actually conforms to the way a Viper is supposed to actually work and it works on land at least theoretically pretty much and I definitely could well this version I don't think I could weaponize it because it can't handle any more fuel mass in fact these fuel uh, structures I forget if they even start fully loaded I think they do actually because I didn't want to abandon carrying the extra fuel because I knew this design especially needs the extra fuel but oh I was trying to deactivate the RCS but I failed <laughs> anyhow the other version I think could be weaponized this version not so much or at least it, it could be weaponized of course but it wouldn't work in Kerbin's atmosphere anymore if it was weaponized I may or may not try to weaponize these and make something out of them that way I'm not really sure Basically, at this point, I'm considering the two designs that I have here done, as they are. 
So yeah, thanks for watching. As always, see you in space. That's completely a safe landing, I'm sure. Hey look, there's our vertical stabilizer and our uh, upper engine. Those survived.